Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sadi and today I'm going to show you something really cool and modern looking. We're going to learn how to create a swirly lava shaped background that you can use for Instagram stories, intro animations, and even event promo ads in your productions. This is going to be a beginner friendly tutorial. So we're going to learn not only how you use fusion tools, but also what tools to use and what they do. Best of all, I'm going to show you not one, but four different techniques to create this effect. That's gonna help you get more comfortable and more confident in using Fusion for all sorts of uses in your work. All right, let's jump in. Let's get started. Set up your project for 1920, 30 frames a second. On the edit page, add a Fusion clip, and then let's go into Fusion. The first technique that we're gonna look at is the fast noise. Hit Shift Spacebar. This brings up the Select Tool utility, and this is how you add all your nodes. All the basic notes that you're going to add over and over, you're quickly going to remember their names and their shortcuts. So background is BG. You're going to use this all the time. Add a background and you can pipe this in here. And now we're looking at this blank black background. Next, what I'm going to do is bring in some fast noise. So the shortcut is FN. Fast noise is a type of Perlin noise. In After Effects, it's called fractal noise. It's pretty much the same thing, and you're going to use this all the time. So what I'm going to do with the fast noise is go into color and give it some color. But before I do, let me bring in a reference for my colors. Here's a free image of some colors that I thought would be relevant to this project. So let's go into fast noise and change the colors. So you click on this black color right here and click on pick screen color. And now you have this little plus sign, little target, and you just go over to whatever color you want from this image, and it'll grab it. So the first one is a purple. Let's go with a blue for the second one. So now you have that look. Let's go back to this first tab where you have all the settings for your fast noise. So right now the fast noise is generating, but it's not moving. To move the fast noise, you use the seed rate. I'm going to use a very small amount, 0 0.02. And now if I hit play, you'll notice that it'll start moving around. Now detail is how sharp it's going to be. So I'm going to use maybe three. And contrast, I'm going to increase that to maybe 2.5. So now you can see that it's moving. It's a little bit more. And I'm going to increase the scale. The scale, if you play with these values, you can quickly figure out what they're doing. So scale is the size of the noise, right? So I'm gonna go with five, and that right there is my starting point. Next, what I'm going to do is add a blur, a directional blur. So if I type directional blur, it comes right up. Go ahead and select, add. And if you want this to add automatically, I'll show you how to do that. Just click on the node that you want the, the next node to add to automatically. So the fast noise is selected right now. And then shift spacebar, directional blur, and notice that it'll pipe in automatically. So a little time saver there. For the length, I'm gonna go with 0.1, and the angle is going to be vertical. So just like that. So length will tell you how much blur you want, and the angle is which direction the blur is going in. I'm going to select the directional blur, and I'm going to hit shift spacebar vortex okay and it's right there go ahead and attach now we have this effect that's going to swirl everything sort of a vortex right and i don't need this so i can turn that off by choosing a single viewer in this area right here and if i want to increase the size of my view i can hit Control f and this is fit and also this green line is the view control of whatever node I have selected. I can turn that off if I want by going to show controls or control K. So now I have my vortex and all I want to do is make it bigger so it's applying to all my composition, right? So let's go to vortex, set this up. Size, I'm gonna go with maybe 3.5. So now it's way bigger. Angle, 90 is good. Just like that, and power, I will leave the power right there. So if you change the power 
it's going to tell you how much it's going to twist. And now you can add some more effects if you want. Let's give it a little bit of a glow. Turn this down. Right there is good. Let me bring in some text. So here's some text that I made earlier. I'm just going to copy it out of here and paste it in here. Okay, and just put it in here. As you know, today is supermoon. So we'll use that. And this looks pretty good as it is. If you want, you can add in another blur. Just a regular blur towards the end, just to smooth it out a little more. All right, now, if you wanted to tweak this, you can go back into your fast noise, which is generating these colors, and you can go back there, and you can, you can tweak the settings to get the kind of shape that you want. So I'm going to increase the detail a little bit and the contrast, and that's gonna give it a little bit of that, I think a little more blur. I'm holding down the control key to make small changes. There you go. So that's your first technique of creating this effect with just fast noise. It's very easy and quick to set up like this, but it's not the best look of all the techniques that we're gonna look at today. So let's move on to the next technique. The second technique we're using is a background with a four point gradient. Let me show you how to set it up. And as usual, the project files are linked in the description so you can work along with me or just use the files as presets in your own videos if you want. Let's go ahead and create a background. Pipe this in and view it up here. So I'm going to change the color to maybe a purple, like so. Let's bring in our color swatch. I'm just gonna drop that JPEG image right there on the, on the node flow and click here, dual viewers and just throw this up there, and then I can make this smaller. Okay, next I'm going to create a background, BG, and I'm going to pipe it into the other background, and it'll create a merge automatically. So now I'm looking at the foreground node, which is this background too. And up here it says solid color. That's what the default value is. I'm going to go with four corner. So basically I have a gradient with four different colors in each corner. I can just click on each one, hit pick screen, and choose some colors from my JPEG. Go with something that I can use on Instagram. So, and maybe orange. I think I'll switch out the teal for blue. Maybe a different shade of purple. Let's see. This one. Yeah, this kind of works. It actually looks pretty good already. So now I have this background which has this gradient on it. What I'm going to do is create a fast noise, but instead of using it as a generator like we did in the last technique, in this technique, we're going to use it as a mask. So it's gonna go into this blue input knot. So what we're telling the gradient, this one, is use the masking from the fast noise. So as it's swirling around and moving around, it's going to change the colors. I'm gonna go with detail six, contrast three, scale seven maybe. And I don't like how this is showing the transparency right now. So I can click on the media out and hit two, and this will just show me both these nodes. If you go into options, it'll show you the checker underlay, so you can take that off if you want. And lastly, I'm going to give it some movement. Seed rate zero point, let's go with 0 0.02. And now we have this movement. The color in the background is really, really light. So what I'm going to do is make it a little bit darker. That's good enough. Let's go ahead and bring in a directional blur one more time. And set this up. 
go with length 5, angle 90 degrees. That's good enough for me. So you can tweak the lines by going into fast noise and tweaking the, the parameters for it. So this right here looks kind of what I'm looking for. And then one more time, we're going to bring in the vortex. Okay. Set it up with maybe size 8. And the power, actually, I'm going to decrease the power a little bit here. Let's go with minus 1. Right there is perfect. And then I think I'll add in another blur, just a regular old blur to soften it up a little bit. Just like that. Let me bring in the text. Copy and paste my reference text so I know what this thing looks like. Turn off inspector and nodes. And that looks pretty good. All right, let's get rid of this and work on the third technique. Also, if you're enjoying the tutorials on this channel, hit the subscribe button to let me know you want more videos. And leave me a comment or a request if you need help with something specific. All right, let's get started with the third approach. And this is probably the most common approach that people would use when building something like this. So what I'm going to do is create another background and an ellipse mask. And ellipse would be ELP, or you can type ellipse. You're going to do this all the time, so it's better to just remember the shortcuts for a few nodes. So let me pipe in this little circle here. Pick screen color. Let's go with purple. And then I'm going to copy and paste the same thing. And I will take this merge, put this into the background, this one into the foreground and view it. And take the second one and I'm going to change the color to something blue maybe. Okay. And I can change, this is purple, I can rename it if it makes it less confusing. And this is blue. Taking the mask for the purple. Like that. Oh, right here is good. Okay, so now I have this. And I can add a transform node, XF transform. We're going to use this all the time as well. Pop it up there, and then you can make it a little bit smaller, put it up here, and that's good enough. And then I'm going to drag the output from the transform and pipe it into the background. So now what I have is, so we got two circles. Now what we can do is, we can add more. We can just take this, copy, paste, and we can pipe it in here. And now we have two. We can move this, like so, and view the output. And we can build a bunch of them. Now instead of Copying and pasting, I'm going to hit Control G to group this. So, not doing anything fancy, just grouped it because there were just too many nodes and it was just a little confusing, right? So, what I'm doing here is paste, pipe it in, go to the transform. I can move the thing over and just Control G to group and I can make a bunch of them. We can keep copying and pasting these just like that, but I want to show you something really, really cool. And this is the concept of, I guess, you call it pre-comping in After Effects. So check this out. So this third group is this two circles, right? So what you could do is you could create a transform node and merge it and take this output and put it here. So now all you did was you just created a transform, but you didn't create the, the group itself. So this group is now feeding to merge four and feeding to merge five, right? So 
see what I'm see what I'm doing here. So the same the same group three is feeding into more merges, and that's what's happening here. And that's how you can create a lot of these very very quickly. So using this concept, let me show you the composition that I've already set up. Let me delete this and bring in the third version to save some time because I've just done the same thing but in more detail. So if you go to group two, that's where all the, see there's the, the circles and they're going into these transforms, okay? So it's the same concept. And now let's go ahead and view the third option. So again, I've used the, the circles to create the background color generation and then use the same directional blur and the vortex uh, the same way I used in the first few techniques. Okay, now let's quickly look at the fourth one, which is uh, using particles to create this effect. So what I'm doing here is creating a particle emitter. So PEM, particle emitter. You could type the whole thing if you want. PRN, particle render, and pipe this in. Once you do, you'll get this sort of default particle system. Okay. And we're going to build this up from scratch. So let me show you how that's done. I'm going to go into the emitter first of all and turn down the number because this is really going to slow me down once I start adding the particle sprites. So right now, as you can see, the particle sprite is just this little point. Let me zoom in for you. So this little thing, the particle itself, it's called a particle sprite. If you change it to blob, you can see it a little bit better. I can increase the size for you, okay? So what I want to do is create a particle sprite that's going to be a line, okay? So background. Throw that up there, change the color to something like that, and hit a rectangle mask on it. Okay. And now we have this rectangle. And I am going to make this thin like that. And I'm going to give it soft edge, which means it's kind of going to be a little blurry like that. And then I'm going to pipe this in to my particle emitter and say that, hey, I want you to use this blue line as the sprite. So to do that, I'm going to go into region and choose all. So that's going to generate particles all over my uh, canvas size here. And then I'm going to go into style and choose bitmap. This is going to give me this little input knot, which will allow me to use this as a particle sprite. If you guys are new to particles, I have a whole particle tutorial playlist that you can watch uh, covers everything from the basics. Okay, so I'm going to pipe this in here and go to media out and output that. So now I have this little particle that has horizontal shape as well as sort of a blurry outline. Now let's set up the particle system for the look that we're, we're going for here. So size, I definitely want some variation. I want some smaller and some bigger ones. I'm going to turn the number down to maybe half of what I have now. That's good. I'm going to make the size even bigger. So maybe one. Variance maybe 0 0.5. That's good. And then the color, I would like some variation of the color as well. So I'm going to go back here. This was blue. I could just turn it white right now and start working with color controls in my particle emitter. So color over life. This is what I want the particle to change colors as the life goes on. Let me bring in my trusty little reference. Okay, go back here. And then this color, I'm going to choose a yellow. And then to create another color on this gradient, I'm going to click on this bar. And this is going to give me that small triangle. And that's telling me this is a second color. I'll change this to maybe orange, and then a third one. I'm going to change that to purple, and a fourth one. We'll change that to maybe blue. Okay, so now I have this 
look going on. Now I can go back to the main settings, increase this a little bit more because I don't want a lot of the black background showing up. So that's right there is good. Okay. And I do want movement. So I'm going to tell the velocity 0 0.01 velocity. Right now, the direction of the default movement is going to be from left to right, which is fine for me. Same deal as before. I'm going to go ahead and add some directional blur. The directional blur will go after the P render, of course. There you go. And there you have it. So the same kind of effect, but using a particle system. Let me go ahead and bring in some text. Pipe that in. I'm using some text in here just to give it um, an overall look of what it looks like. And let's go ahead and play the final version here. So this is using the particle system, um, and I tweak the colors a little bit. And there you have it. Hope you guys learned something new and enjoyed the video. Feel free to try your own versions of this effect. Before you go, subscribe and support the channel if you find this content useful to you. Leave a like or comment below if you have any requests or questions. I'm Sadi and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.